Hi, my name is Ernesto León de la Rosa Carrillo, um, and uh, this is my presentation of 15, on 15 points towards an instructional philosophy. Uh, this presentation is given uh, to fulfill a requirement for the Educational Technology 510 uh, class on learning theory in instructional design. Uh, First of all, I would like to share with you a little bit about my relationship with school, uh, which uh, it's kind of contradictory and very contentious, especially with, with the idea of school assignments. As a student, it seemed that I always found a way to uh, try to make every assignment uh, uh, be meaningful to me and I guess that, that's, that's a great thing, except when uh, that comes at the expense of uh, having it be meaningful for the class, which uh, happened more than a couple of times where I would end up turning in an assignment that really had very little to do with uh, the, what the class covered during the semester. And... Uh, so, uh, but but b before I go, I, I continue with that, I, I first need to, to point out and be clear that when I speak about my, my career as a student, as my, my life as a student, I basically am referring uh, to my life as a student in, in higher education, in college. Uh, and not, not, not only because that's when, when I feel that... Uh, those options, the option to have education be meaningful to me personally, uh, it, it, it only came to be in college, uh, but also because that's, that is what I do. I teach, um, I am a college professor, uh, a visual arts college professor. Uh, now, uh, uh, my, my experience with primary and secondary uh, schooling is is a bit forgettable. Uh, I honestly don't don't remember much of it, uh, but I do remember that I couldn't even think about the notion of making uh, the education experience, the learning experience, meaningful to me. Uh, now, the context that I that I'm referring to, this is specifically uh, a public school uh, context in Mexico, which is where I'm from. Uh, now I obviously was educated, so th there's no there's no problems that there, uh, and I don't know how that compares with the context of public schools in in the United States since I never attended one, uh, not in in primary or secondary K through twelve, or and I don't know how that compares to private schools anywhere for that matter because I've never attended a private school anywhere. Uh, now, um, going back to, to my focus on higher education, I also must make, uh, make it perfectly clear that even though I am uh, a professor in the visual arts department in uh, Universidad Autónoma de Ciudad Juárez, I've never actually been an art student. Rather, my, my, my bachelor's degree was in communication, in electronic media, uh, with a couple of minors in um, film and religious studies. So I guess film studies was the closest I ever got to, to having a formal art class, to having been a formal art student. And uh, the same goes for education classes. I never took, or actually that's even uh, less, I was even less of an education um, student. I never took any education classes. I... I uh, I just, I, I was just a communication major. And then with my master's, I did a master's in interdisciplinary studies, uh, which focused on uh, communication, philosophy, and creative writing. Those focuses were my choices. Uh, so again, I, I never took any classes on visual arts and, or education. Uh, it wasn't until my, my PhD, which I started last year here at the University of Arizona in Tucson, that, uh, that, that I became 
uh, officially an art and education student, and my PhD is in art and visual culture education. So I guess that's a bit of a a, a, a strange path that, that I follow towards being a professor. Now, going back to my life as a student, uh, I, I, I must say that, that I love being a student, so much so that uh, even at age 35, I, I still am one uh, by choice. And, and it could, I guess it could be argued that as long as I'm a professor, uh, I will remain a student of sorts. And I, I will remain engaged with academia in some way or another. Um, but and, and, and so I, I, I love that. I, I, I truly enjoy the, the, the conversations that happen uh, around academia, that happen uh, before and, and after class. I, I, I truly enjoy conversing with peers, classmates, faculty members. I, I truly feel that uh, those exchanges are just uh, filled to the brim with, with, with possibilities and potential and, and knowledge and, and sharing of information. I do, however, not feel that way about classes. Uh, I actually kind of cringe at the idea of attending classes most of the time. And that has also remained a constant in my life as a student. Now, I, I, I cannot say that that is because um, the professors I had were less than excellent, because they weren't. And then granted, not all of them were, were uh, equally wonderful, but I can, I, I can say that all of them were very, very gracious with, with their time and their expertise and, and the way they, they engage and, and, became, and, and were uh, professors. So one must wonder, or at least I must wonder, what is it about classes then that, that makes me cringe, that make them so uh, not enjoyable? And what I can come up with is uh, that uh, at the end of the day, classes are restrictive. Uh, they, they are, in many ways, in many times, they are open and shut cases of a lesson plan having to be developed on a certain way with a certain point in time, and, and then it ends at a certain very specific point, uh, whether they're 90 minutes long or 60 minutes long or 45 minutes long, it doesn't matter. Uh, they, they, there's a, a set point to begin and a set point to end. And so uh, that got me wondering, uh, is there a way that, that, that we can uh, go around that, that restriction that, that the class, uh, by, their, by, by its very nature of, of having a convened time, uh, which is unavoidable, uh, if, if, if there's a way to get around those restrictions, but still remain within, the, this, within a sense, a class, a class experience that, that allows for a learning experience. So I thought of three different ways in which this could be done. The first one is uh, what I call class as a conversation. And what I mean by that is that classes shouldn't be uh, uh, developed in, in, in as uh, a lesson plan, but rather they should be developed as a conversation where everybody gets to have their say, everybody gets to be involved, everybody at some point is featured uh, during that conversation. Of course, uh, th those, as in any conversation, th there will probably be one or two people that, are, that just know more about the topic at hand than, than the rest of them, than the rest of, 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 of the parties involved. And, and more times than none, I guess the professor would be uh, that person, um, hopefully. Um, but, but even if not, uh, the conversation can still happen and the conversation can still have and, and, and be insightful in, in more ways than one, even if, if the expert is not necessarily the professor. So I wonder about this idea of conversations. Uh, how, how about if, if we turn classes much more into conversations that do not necessarily end, but maybe they can spill out into, into other sessions, into next session, 
and and don't have such a, a rigid uh, idea of of a lesson plan in mind all the time. Um, the second idea that that I had for classes is the the idea of class as performance, where um, uh, performance art. Uh, I don't know if ever, if anybody is familiar with it. Uh, I'm sure most of you are. Performance art. Uh, uh, takes up where where theater leaves off, in the sense of it is not um, necessarily performed on a stage. It is not necessarily performed uh, away from an audience. Rather, many of many times uh, the audience members become part of the performance. The audience members uh, are actively engaged in the performance, and. How about if, if we think of classes as that, as, as performance art, where the audience, i.e. the students, uh, become an active member of, of that performance. They become actively engaged and critically engaged. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, in the next slide. Uh, now, uh, th there's, there's an educator by the name of Charles Garoyan who has written extensively about this idea of performance-based uh, education, performance pedagogy, and and he's he's one of the people that that, that I that I look to in in, in that sense. Uh, before I forget, go and just very fast because I I forgot to mention this in the conversation aspect. Uh, the person that 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 I, that I align myself with in the conversation, although he calls it a dialogue is uh, Paolo Fiere, who in his uh, work of Pedagogy of the Oppressed, who proposes that, that really any pedagogical enterprise should be uh, carried out in a respectful, dialogic uh, manner, where all parties are, are equal and all parties learn from everybody else. Now, uh, going back to the performance, um, yeah, it, this this still uh, the the idea of the of the active audience participation is still very much in line with this idea of of not having uh, a a set division between be, between the learners and the people who are teaching uh, the people who are leading the class and and very much like a dialogue where where everybody is either is is on the process of becoming uh, uh, not, not only the receiver of a message but also the sender of that same message uh, the ideas of, of ideas of liminality and liminal spaces come to mind with this uh, notion and my final proposition for a class is the class as a curatorial practice um, uh, curators are the people that uh, that put together uh, art shows, art exhibits. They, they, they are the people that, that choose uh, which art objects are going to be displayed, and they are the people who are in charge of deciding how they're going to be displayed. Uh, it's, it's not accidental. Uh, it is always uh, due to some personal uh, or aesthetic agenda. That, uh, and for an aesthetic purpose or for a very specific purpose, maybe political as well, ethical, um, whatever the case might be, there is always a purpose for the arrangement and there is always a purpose for the curatorial practice. So I wonder if a professor's job is seen as a curatorial practice with a purpose, with an agenda, then uh, students could be able to subjectively uh, engage that uh, that that practice, engage that professor, not as not on an institutional level, not as as a nameless and unquestionable institution, but as a person, as a subject, and uh, it it could be made clear that 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 subject has agendas and doesn't really just have knowledge or 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 all the information in the world, but just has a way to say things and, and a want to say certain things and by that same token will inevitably leave other things unsaid, other uh, uh, narratives not, not explored. Uh, Henry Giraud is one of the people that, that, that writes extensively about this idea of, 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 of critical pedagogy 
where uh, master narratives are, are questioned. Uh, they're, they're not just taken on, on face value. Um, and so uh, those are my three uh, uh, proposals for, for what classes could be. Now, uh, all of those uh, proposals, all of, all, all of those three scenarios could very well uh, find their way in, into online environments. Uh, through uh, conversations can happen through chats, through message boards, uh, performances can happen through online uh, social environments in, uh, like uh, in Second Life, for example. Or, and and uh, curatorial practices are a part, uh, an integral part of social media li like Twitter, where, where you, uh, you follow certain uh, uh, people that really what they do is, is they, they give you content, they curate content and then share it with their followers. So it's not very much unlike that. Uh, all those, all these three scenarios are also very, very constructive in nature. Uh, they, 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 they follow suit with um, uh, Johans, Jonasen's, Jonasen's description of the general characteristics of constructivist learning environments, uh, almost to to a to a point. Uh, the, 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 there is complex knowledge and, and, and being built and being constructed here together with the students. And, and it is very much a, a case of, of um, being dependent on, on, on all parties, uh, being willing and, and, and able to follow through with their tasks in authentic and meaningful manners, which is uh, very much uh, one of the main staples of a, of a constructivist uh, learning environment. Uh, uh, I, I feel that uh, th those three uh, proposals are also very much in line with uh, with Bloom's tax uh, 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 taxonomy uh, taxonomy levels, uh, especially the, the revised version, the, the version that turns each level in, into a verb, in, into an, an active uh, uh, action. Um, and, and at the end of the day, they, you know, to converse, you must understand and evaluate. To, to, enge to actively engage a performance piece, you must analyze and, and then create. And, and to, uh, uh, to, to critically engage a curatorial practice, you, you must remember what, what other uh, uh, experiences you have with, with curatorial practices in the past, and, and you must apply them to, to, kind of, to try and understand this new agenda or, or this agenda that, that this new curator you're encountering is, is spousing and, 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 and trying to pass along to you. And, and I must uh, make sure that, that everybody understands that, that I'm not using agenda in, in, in the, mo, in the uh, uh, negative connotation of, of the word. I'm just using it simply in, in order to describe a, a purpose. Um, uh, of the seven principles of, of good practice in undergraduate education, I find that uh, the encouragement of contact and, uh, and cooperation are 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 a must in in these three scenarios that that I that I proposed above or before. Um, uh, otherwise, no conversation will 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 happen. No uh, active engagement in a performance piece will uh, will be possible, and certainly no critical engagement of a cultural practice can can occur. Uh, so uh, those two uh, principles are very much in play here. Uh, now, uh, going back to, to, to what I, how I began this whole uh, discussion uh, and talk, uh, the question about assignments. And to be honest with you, uh, I, I'm still not sure what to do with assignments. Because on the one hand, yeah, everybody uh, should be able to make that, uh, every assignment meaningful to his or herself. Uh, but then uh, don't we run the risk of, of, of everybody just staying within our own comfort zones throughout our entire schooling careers, throughout our, our entire life as students? Um, and, and I feel that uh, moving away from those comfort zones is very much a necessary step uh, towards uh, learning anything, towards creating any sort of learning experience. 
So uh, the assignment question is one that, that remains. It, it still remains and, and it still troubles me in, uh, to this point. And uh, really, as, as any conversation where that doesn't really end, but just maybe takes a, 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 a life on its own, good conversations, that, the, the, that is. Uh, and as, as uh, good performance pieces that really do not give out explanations, but uh, instead they, they, they give out points of reflection, and, and as any uh, proper curatorial practice uh, that, that is always hopeful for new insights and meanings to emerge, I, I, I don't feel that a, uh, that a final conclusion is necessary. I, I feel that rather uh, a final reflection in the form of, uh, of, interroga of interrogation uh, is what, what follows suit. And that, and that question, that interrogation is probably... Uh, so what else can be done with, with, with classes, with class times, uh, in order to, to uh, uh, liberate it from these constrictive notions that, that are apparently inherent in, in the idea of class time? And with that, I, I say thank you. <laughs>